the sun. And it's actually producing a nice lot of power today. We are 24th of December and the pattern is something like this. So we've got from there to there to go. And it's a brilliant day today. Brilliant, producing loads of power. So I wanted to start for once on a positive note, but let's get on to batteries. Oh. <sighs> well, that's not the right camera angle, is it? That's a better camera angle. So I thought we'd talk about batteries because it does need discussing. For those that are thinking of getting them especially, all I'm doing these videos for really is those that are on the fringes are pushing the button on install. Um, despite all the problems I've had so far, if you haven't watched the previous videos, go back and watch them, it's well worth it. Hundreds of comments on the first video I put up on Solo, loads of interest in it. What YouTube seems to do with this channel specifically is it you get a video and you're like, yeah, and everyone's like, yes, 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 we want to follow it, we want more videos, keep pumping these videos out. And it just throttles exposing these videos anywhere. So if you could give a thumbs up, that'd be great. Because I think going by everyone else does videos nowadays, they're all saying, please put the thumbs up because otherwise these videos don't get recognized. And I think they might have a point because it goes, yay, 6,000 views. And it goes, Bleh. so if you could like the video, apparently that's going to help, especially if you're interested. If you're interested, just put a thumbs up on the video. Because a lot of people are, there's hundreds of comments saying, yes, please continue doing this. So I just really doing this video series, essentially, to just highlight. So I'm having loads of issues that you would have seen in the previous videos, right up from originally putting the money down, deposit down, to getting the installation done, then issues with things happening, etc., etc. But one of those issues, these batteries here, which you saw originally, um, with and other man manufacturers as well. It's not just the Fox ESS batteries. ECM 4100s, I think is the exact model name of these. They're essentially just over four kilowatt uh, hour per pack, essentially. They're modular, brilliant design, aesthetically pleasing. Got lovely little legs they stand on. It's an all in one unit. It's just a beautiful piece of engineering. Lovely. Not only that, it's rated to be outside, so it's waterproof. I've decided to bring it inside into the garage, but and all I'm really going into today, just to hammer home this point, if you are going to purchase a house battery and you, and it's fairly substantial, like mine is 28 kilowatt hours, I've got another eight coming of the same, by the way. So I've gone and bought more, despite the issues that have arisen, all related to cold weather. I'm pretty sure, based on my last video, I had to turn this off. So it was drawing from the grid, where we left off last time, I had to do a quick video, an unscheduled video, it was drawing from the grid like 1500 watts constant all day. And I was like, this is just stupid. Um, I'm actually paying to bring electricity into the battery to then use that electricity from that battery. Now that might sound like, well, you're not really losing out. What's the major problem? Don't forget there are inefficiencies. So you're better off just getting it straight from the grid and using the power if you do need that power. It's not power we're actually using. It was just charging the battery. Uh, that's where that power is going to. It's 1200 or 1500 watts, something like that. It was drawing from the grid. This is mainly down to cold weather or almost entirely down i can't completely say it's so until i've seen it go for a 12 month cycle essentially what is happening and what the reason i bring it up is so anybody out there either you've just had them installed and are struggling you're searching for answers right now to come across this video or you're thinking of buying a system which a lot of you are you'll have fanciful ideas in your head that i can get this like i did you can get this system in place it's i can get max it out massively 28 and then i've got another eight coming just you know 30 odd kilowatt hours of power this is going to be more than sufficient it's going to be brilliant it all falls down in cold weather specifically with this battery pack but also looking at the comments with other battery packs as well have been mentioned people have got a similar problem which if you look at the small print you might find references to this so that's what i'm encouraging you to do don't just look at the website where they say look here's a spec sheet there's a data sheet of what you can expect from performance from your battery pack do a lot of digging before because what you're going to be told by the professionals that want to install this stuff may not be real life it may be that it's just information they've got from the manufacturers the manufacturers have given them a marketing video or literature or they've got to meet them and they've had a chat 
it's the fluff as it were. You need to scrape all that away and dig a little bit deeper, find out what are other user experiences. And the Fox ESS has got a, it's an, I think it's an official group. It's got about 3000 members at the time of this video. Brilliant, loads of people there with systems just like this Fox, mine's all Fox. They jump on in their own time and answer questions and stuff and try and help out. So it's really, really good. So first point is to really get on a group whether you think you need it or not. If you're like, no, 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 mine's all fine, it's all gonna work fine, go on a group and do some digging. Ask, how does how is yours responding in such and such a temperature? I'm yet to find out about warm temperatures, um, but from what I can see, it's less of an issue. All my issues are because of the cold weather. It's exasperated slightly by the fact that the dashboard with mine, the access I can get, says that my batteries reports back. My batteries didn't drop the day where I had the issue, I had to shut them down. They were at 15.6 degrees, the battery pack was. The engineer from Fox is saying, no, 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 it's between, I think, between five and nine degrees Celsius. I was like, well, that's a big disparity between the two. And apparently, it's looking at individual cells in terms of temperature and going by the lowest denominator and then treating the pack as if they're all like that to protect the pack. So there is, it's not stupidity that this stuff doesn't work during cold weather. They're building it in to try and protect the pack. What would you have, rather have? You'd rather have it just chuck, take a full maximum charge, cold weather, even though it's damaging it, or would you rather it throttle it all back and try and slow charge it? I mean, the only argument, slight argument I've got, it doesn't seem to really warm up the batteries that much because they don't respond. If they've been pulling 1.2, 1.5 kilowatts all day, when you go into economy seven to try and get the cheap tariff where you want them to charge, um, it also charges it that as well. So it's like they never quite get there to the degree where it starts pulling in five kilowatts. So it's trying to protect the battery pack, but when it's cold, which if you're in the UK, this may be more exasperated than anywhere else. I don't know. There's countries that are far colder than here um, who would have a different story to tell, but presumably worse if they've got these exact packs and I say other batteries do run across this problem as well. You just need to be aware that possibly from November to February you're going to have this sort of weird, weird period where there's going to be times you're drawing from the grid at peak rates and you're not able to charge it anywhere near full. So mine was charging all last night from midnight, just half past midnight, all the way up to half past six and it, uh, it was 56% charge when I checked it eight o'clock this morning or something like that. Um, it, it done next to no charging, because don't forget we didn't finish the day before it started economy seven charging at zero. For example, the lowest state of charging can go is 10, and it was at about 40 or 50%. So it charged more or less nothing overnight on that economy seven. So when you do your 12 month calculation, when you're working all this stuff out, when I wanna talk about batteries, this is what I'm talking about. For four months of the year, and it won't be for four full months of the year, I'm aware of that, there's gonna be clumps of time within that that it's, it's negligible the amount of use you can get out of the battery packs if you leave them as standard. So you just need to keep that in mind. And I'm just trying to make everyone aware. I mean, share this video because, the, share the problems I've had in the previous videos because these are all things that are gonna, massive headaches for me, and gray hair that you don't need to go through. If someone said to me, by the way, November to February, on and off through those pretty much discount these batteries, be able to utilize them, I would be set up for it. Like, oh, right, okay. So what do I need to put in place? And then I might have not put these right here. Might put them inside somewhere, try to find somewhere for them to go, maybe, made space. So, and that kind of comes onto my final point in this little video is, try and get them, cal calculate your plans. So basically, what I've seen on the forums is once you get these to a stable temperature rather than outside temperature, you're not gonna have any issues, apart from when you get to summer if they get too hot, but let's ignore that for now. Put them inside somewhere, if you can. Now, that's gonna be almost impossible for most people, so then you fall onto the fact you can insulate them, but the official line is not to insulate them because it can void your warranty. Also, other issues with your house insurance and stuff like that, if you've taken a product that's supposed to be exposed like this, as in it's nice packaging, etc., but then you wrap a lot of stuff around it and it causes a fire, you, you're you the one that's implicated in the whole thing, aren't you? Because you've done something outside of the recommended manufacturer's process. So people are building insulation packs to go around this. So you get a little wooden frame or if the insulation's thick enough, it stands up on its own and surrounding it. 
and then they're reporting back that actually they hardly ever get an issue. So there are workarounds, they're not desirable workarounds. And if you stick by the manufacturer's uh, minimum requirements for distance, like from enclosures, it's quite a big, quite a big surround. So unless you ignore that, but you do go by the manufacturer's thing, it's a big surround, it's gonna stick out, like in my garage, it stick out quite far. The reason I chose this pack is because I measured the old chimney breast, that's still there, but there's no chimney, um, and they fit in, and it fits in really nicely. Well, that destroys all that planning. If then I stick a stonking big great thing on there. So, you need to know, it needs to be readily be available, and this is my argument, is Fox should be so upfront about this, just say, look, why don't we say it's gonna, minus 10 plus 55 or the charging from zero to plus 55 massively going to be limited and when we say naught and minus 10 we don't really mean that we mean within these battery cells um at being throttled from i don't know 16 and below it seems to be from all the feedback so we need to boiler's just gone off so the boiler is on in this it's not freezing cold in here i got the garage door open hence you can see my breath probably but the boy has been going. Um, but nonetheless, there are workarounds. It would save a lot of headache. So loft isn't an answer. Either. If you think bringing it inside means putting your loft, don't forget, loft's freezing. If you're not sure, you can pop up there and go, oh, wow, it's cold in here. You might have insulation at the bottom, but usually there's no insulation on the actual the ridge, as it were. Um, so loft isn't an answer. Garage isn't inside either, even though I considered it inside prior to having the knowledge that, hmm, it's not quite going to what I imagine on the spec sheet. What can we do? If you can get them in a stable, warm environment, cellar isn't either. I saw someone commenting the other day on the Fox Group. I'm going to think I'm putting them in my cellar. Can you see any issues? And I quickly jumped on there. I was going to say, whatever you do, don't put them in your cellar because it's going to be freezing cold. Um, so if you can get them inside, you're going to save yourself a load of headaches. So what it also seems to be, I'll take a sip of tea. It's not just the temperature, it's the temperature and state of charge. So there's some metric somewhere within the battery management system, like if it's at 15%, it'll almost stop outputting and just start taking that charge. If it's at 60%, it does something different depending on what temperatures the lowest denominating cell is or however they actually work it, because it's a bit secret going on here and trying to work out what's going on. What I'd like is a chart that says state of charge versus, um, temperature and then the sort of kilowatt you can expect either way with it charge and discharge and you know a chart with those two lines on it those two metrics cold weather is what's stumbling these batteries now apparently tesla power walls have their own climate control if you want to call it that built into them i've actually got a gen one tesla power wall sat over there um i've just bought an inverter for it so we'll see where that goes but it's purported dead so it's given to me so it might be dead um, but we'll try that as well and i'll do a separate video on that and if anyone's got anybody that has anything to do with tesla power or one and actually know what they're talking about we could do with your help but the fox batteries especially and other brands because people have been commenting that they also have a similar issue cold weather you will need insulation but not insulation that's going to void your warranty or cause a fire hazard uh, there's plenty of engineers out there I've seen commenting, talking about different materials that are better um, than others. But there is some legwork. Uh, you will need tools to do that. You will need some knowledge of how to build it and also the room to do it. So if you can get it inside, keep it warmer than cold, you'll probably avoid these. Now, this is going to be a thing of the past as we enter in now, coming up to the end of January. Going to February, March, it's going to start warming up. And this is not going to be, this is going to be a breeze. I'm going to be filling it, I'm hoping so. Going to be filling this battery. Yeah, that's going to, that's going to haunt me in this video. <laughs> I'm going to be filling these batteries up and they're not going to be big enough. Hence the reason I've bought more. So the confidence level of them is still good. It's just that if you're thinking of lifting yourself off the grid as much as possible, you're going to be disappointed. And I, thankfully, I've come in at absolutely the worst time ever. We've got three weeks of freezing cold weather that's made these almost completely all right, all right, but miles below my expectations, even though I'd put a reserve in for them being not what promised. Um, it's not English, is it? But whatever. But if you come into it in, say, May this year and you're getting them installed, so you're getting them installed in a warmer climate, when you head in, you're going to get a nasty surprise. So I'm trying to avoid the nasty surprise 
prior to purchase so you can plan and work out the best situations, so which will save you loads of money because you're going to put them and wire them in the correct place first time. All your charging will. You mean by oh, these Apple watches are ridiculous. Um, so you're going to then put them in the correct place, which will mean your time when I've got sun burning away there, lovely, won't. You won't be pulling anything from the grid. You won't be trickle charging. You won't be having a short charge on the economy seven, etc., etc. You're gonna, it's gonna save you a fortune by putting them in the right place the first time. So go into it. If you haven't batteries installed, go into it thinking cannot be in a cold environment, not a drafty environment. They need to be in the right environment, and you're gonna have a blissful time. So I hope this video has helped. I don't want every video I'm doing to be a moaning video, but I'm coming unstuck for a reason, and I just want to say that it is not just me. It's not like, oh, something wrong with him. We haven't worked it out. That forum is inundated with people coming on almost daily going, batteries don't seem to be working as blah, 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 blah. Same question, same answer. It's the cold weather, state of charge versus the throttle, and it meets somewhere in that metric, and you're going to get massively restricted battery usage in the way it takes a charge and the way it discharges. Uh, in other words, your usage and the ability to harvest the sun and store it in these battery packs. So... It sounds like they're not worth it, but I'm pretty confident, almost certain, as I head in now to the warmer months, this is just going to pick up the slack completely and we'll almost be entirely off grid. So I'm going to discount four months, not four full months, but four months of the year where you go, ooh, might struggle here, unless you put your battery in a warmer environment. That's what you need to do. I was not notified of any of these issues, so I had no knowledge of that at all. I went through all the specification sheets, did all my research, did not think about going to the forums and asking questions about batteries I'd almost set on and saying, by the way, how do these respond in cold weather? And getting a good rounded response. So there you go. <sighs> State of charge we are now, 64%. So it's taking charge of the sun, but at 1.2 kilowatts, I think it is. I hope this helps. Again, like it, share, comment, and I'll see you on the next one.